world is changing now. Green has given way to orange, red, brown, and yellow. The mercury hangs lower in the thermometer. Late October is a magical time in the whitetail woods, a time of expectation. The bucks are beginning to care less about safety and more about does. They begin to venture forth in daylight more often now. Mike Reed and Josh Merzberger took advantage of these changes and tagged two great bucks. However, they weren't the only team members hunting on Saturday. Ty Kehoe, one of the youngest members of our team, knocked the rust off and punched the year's first doe tag while his older brother Brooks filmed the entire adventure. The two brothers have developed a solid track record, harvesting multiple bucks on camera over the past few years. On the morning of October 27th, we find Ty with bow in hand, deep in the Iowa timber. It's the morning of October 27th. We had some luck last night and I got a doe, so this morning we came in the timber and we're gonna hope for you, see if we can get a buck. Just Chris and Juan going back to their bed. Today we're only going for bucks, so hopefully a good one shows up.
Ty's hunt was one of our best so far this season, but unfortunately, it didn't produce a shot. 200 miles to the southwest, Josh Sparks is also hunting on the morning of the 27th. He's in the same stand he has hunted the two previous sits. Yeah, there's two. That's a stud. Yeah, they come. Dude, that's him. Again, Josh has a brief encounter with a shooter buck. Three hunts, three good bucks, zero shots. It has become the story of Josh and Max's season. Back in Southern Iowa, Owen Riegler gets ready for the afternoon hunt, starting with his routine warm-up on the backyard target. After ensuring his bow is dialed in, Owen decides to go after Digits, the giant 10-pointer that recently showed back up on his farm. Well guys, here we are, October 27th. I got a good feeling about tonight, I said that yesterday, but we got a little change of weather today. It cooled down another 10 or 12 degrees and then we got a north wind came in with a you know pretty good breeze and it had been real quiet the last four or five sits, I think. Almost no wind, so I like that change of weather. We're after that digits buck. We've actually got him on a pretty good pattern. He keeps coming from the east, headed west. I've got him on a camera down there, and he's done it one time in daylight, and he's been doing it about every night in dark, so I'm hoping with this weather change, we'll get him in daylight again. And we've got a nice little funnel right here. We've got a bend in the creek, two of them actually. So he basically he's got to go right through this pinch. It's a pretty good funnel, one of the better ones. We've also got a redneck blind right here as well. It, that's actually the, the blind I shot that crab's buck out of. I just opted to get up a little bit higher in this hunt because it's such a nice day. I just kind of wanted to be in the breeze, you know, but that's a heck of a spot either one of these. up stirring around. I thought we seen three bucks right there, but I don't know if we lost one back in those trees or there was only two, but anyway, I saw two for sure. It's pretty cool to watch that scent communication going on in those scrapes. They're reading the script so far coming right up this little funnel, which we just need the right gear to do that. hundred and eighty five miles to the northeast, we again join Tai Kehoe. He is back in the stand for the evening hunt. It's the night of October twenty seventh. We came out this morning and had really good luck and saw a lot of nice bucks and a lot of does. So today we are doing a hanging hunt and we we put a stand over a clover plot that is in between two funnels. So the wind is not in our favor, but hopefully tonight the wind switches and we have some luck. It's 
about a half an hour until sunset. We haven't seen anything, so I think I'm gonna hit the rattle horns and see if anything happens. Oh my gosh, Brooks! Oh, Brooks! You don't even understand! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh! We were just talking about how this is unbelievable. How we don't see anything. Like we're like, there's nothing out here. Like we can't believe it. And I'm like, I turn around, I'm like Brooks, big buck, and it walked. I'm not lying. Five yards from the tree, directly behind us. That happened in a matter of 15 seconds. I shot that deer. What just happened? What just happened? That's the big nine. That's the that's that's the first deer we've seen all night. I just shut the big nine. Dad, Dad, did we have not seen a single deer all night. And as I say that, I turn around. That buck is walking behind us five yards away. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Go get him, Ty. Nice. Well done. That was a quick crack job. I didn't think that that made sense. There wasn't any more blood. I could hear it. You did it accidentally? Yeah, Ty. over time. It must matter. Oh, no. We got him out here on the field edge. It was a buck we called the Big Nine, and we think he's about six and a half years old. But tonight was a pretty slow night, but all of a sudden he was right behind us, about five yards away, and it all happened within like 10 seconds, and I shot him. We've had a lot of encounters with this deer over the past three years, but very happy that I got a good shot on him. He only went about 90 yards, so could have be happier with this buck, and thanks for watching Midwest Whitetail. Ty and Brooks Kehoe combined for another great buck. Owen Riegler never saw digits, and thus ends the evening of October 27th. The next day I load my truck and point it north. For the next few days I will be hunting with a longtime friend, Tom Wainer, on a farm I have not hunted for years. We've got everything loaded up, and we're heading to northeast Iowa, to the area where I grew up. And this, uh, this will be a lot of fun for me because the farm that we're going to hunt is probably one of the prettiest, if not the prettiest farm that I've ever been on in my life. It's right on the bluffs of the Mississippi River. And we'll be staying in a little cabin uh, near the river, hunting that bluff country right behind the cabin. It's a spot that I hunted a lot when I was a kid growing up. So it's been 34 years, I just figured it up, 34 years since I've hunted this spot, this farm. Uh, it's gorgeous. I think we're going to be four days, three days, of hunting up there and then we'll, we'll be back down here again chasing after some of these bucks that are left on this farm. Breathtaking scenery and long-held memories inspire excitement as I arrive at my friend's cabin and unload my gear. Owen Riegler heads back to the woods. This evening he will hunt a buck he calls Picket Fence. 
Owen has gotten several trail cam photos of the deer, but now he hopes to finally see the deer on the hoof. Well, here it is about 3.30, October 28th. Bottom's dropped out on this temperature. It's just down in the 30s for high today, which is perfect. So that's why I came to cut corn. Well, so they should feed pretty good. Does have been in here like crazy. This is where we've been hunting that picket fence buck early in the year. And uh, he hasn't really been up here much except for I checked the cart today. At 10 o'clock, he walked by that scrape right there. Headed into that timber, I presume. Looked like he kept going anyway. And um, you know, hopefully bed it in there and he's right here close. He'll feed out this direction or come out and bump does around. It's lighting up a little bit from yesterday. It's just a light breeze. Should be a pretty good set. We'll see how it goes. There he is coming out toward the path. I'm not sure if he's not an old buck, Joe. And he's got a lot of belly on him. Right there, if you look at how much belly he's got, that looks like an older buck. I thought he was just a three-year-old earlier in the trail camp pictures, but I think I might be wrong about that deer. Owen's hunt ends with deer in the field in a rain-sleet mix that slugs its way across Iowa. The precipitation eventually turns to snow. On the morning of October 29th, Mike Reed watches as sunrise reveals a world covered in white. It's Tuesday, October 29th, and it's a winter wonderland after our first snow here in Iowa. It feels great to be out in this weather. It's high pressure it's like 30.3 almost clear blue skies the actual temperature is 25 it feels like 21 and we're uh, back in here on this sherman farm i decided to move up on top of the ridge and hang this stand this morning so we can see uh, farther into the ridge a lot of deer work up in bed on this point i imagine the movement's going to be uh, a little bit later as they work their way back in there from the ag fields. and probably five or six different bucks, the best of which is a, a nine point, I think he's a four year old, I need to look at the pictures, but pretty nice nine, worked his way on top of the ridge there and then he kind of went back into the ravine. And then we have a mature, short tined eight point that's been running all around and he just came in pretty close. 
and a bunch of other smaller bucks. So, unfortunately, off to my left, there's uh, we, our visibility is not very good from this tree. Mike's action continues all morning until he finally decides to wrap up the hunt, but the big bodied buck he is after doesn't appear. Hundred and forty five miles to the north in northeast Iowa, I'm wrapping up my first morning back home. A break at the cabin filled with the sounds of the river and a fresh cup of coffee prime me for the midday oh, work. Oh. Just pour them into a form and compress them. Yeah, it's gonna snow now, but <clears throat> so I don't know if they really <laughs> Drake and I set a stand high up on a bedding ridge, planning to come back to the spot very soon. The evening finds me hanging another stand on the edge of a bluff with an incredible view. We didn't get set up with more than a minute to spare. As soon as we got in here and got the camera in place, the deer started to come out. It took a long time to pick a tree. Uh, it's one of those things where not having ever hunted up on here, we didn't know for sure what to do and the wind kept switching on us. I don't know if this is the spot to be in or not, but uh, so far so good. There's uh, four that we've seen so far come out into the field on top here. It's a pretty good trail that runs behind the stand on the downhill side on the timber side. It's kind of a fly by the seat of your pants hunt but uh, that's kind of what this whole trip is all about so having some fun and you know we're gonna see some deer tonight there's no doubt about that. They're already coming out. Yeah yeah that's a big deer. Yeah, so you can zoom in. Oh, that's awesome. 
whole day. This is ridiculous, isn't it? It's like going to the movies. Something spooked him off the top, though. We don't know what. Um, could be a coyote or something up there. We can hear some howling off in the distance right now. But that was a nice buck. I don't know that I would have shot that deer. Uh, I don't think I probably would have, but um, it was a really nice looking deer. I'm looking straight to the east so I can see the ducks flying up and down the river, big flocks of them, hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands and thousands of them are going back and forth up and down the river. It just feels so good. I mean, I grew up a duck hunter. I didn't grow up a deer hunter, we just didn't have deer. We had incredible public land duck hunting back then. I'm sure it's still good now, but it's been forever since I've been you know, duck hunting on the river. But it just brings back a lot of memories, it's really cool. I'm gonna assume we'll see a few more deer Tomorrow, uh, I think tomorrow morning, we're gonna hunt that spot where we put the stand up today at midday. We've got six total hunts, three mornings and three evenings to try to put it together, but we're off to a good start. Really nice buck this evening. Oh my gosh, Brooks, oh my Brooks, you don't even understand. Oh my gosh, what just happened? What just happened? That's the big nine. It's kind of a fly by the seat of your pants hunt, but uh, that's kind of what this whole trip is all about. So having some fun and you know, we're gonna see some deer tonight. There's no doubt about that. We're after that digits buck. We've actually got him on a pretty good pattern. He keeps coming from the east headed west. I've got him on a camera down there. Three mornings and three evenings to try to put it together, but we're off to a good start. Really nice buck this evening. Fiery oranges and deep reds paint the backdrop. There is change afoot in the Midwest hardwoods. What was a haven of green and calm mere weeks ago is now turning into the chaos for which we've all been waiting. Ty Kehoe's bucks show that something great can happen at any moment. We just have to be there and stay ready. The month we've been waiting for is almost here. Only Halloween lies between us and the promised land. We are now but a single day away from when we will be chasing November.